get started. Thanks for being here, everybody. Montana beat Delaware 49-19 in the second round of the FCS playoffs. It advances on to the quarterfinal round for the 15th time in program history. Um, with us today, we've got Coach Houck, uh, defensive end Hayden Harris led the team in tackles, uh, and Nick Osmo running back. And Coach, we'll, we'll just start from your uh, final thoughts against Delaware as you get ready to host the Paladins in a rematch of the 2001 National Championship. All right, thanks, Tabes. Yeah, in regard to the Delaware game, uh, that was a great team win. Uh, everyone's really good at this time of year, and uh, just pretty awesome to get a 30-point win in that in that first round game. I thought the snow hindered us a little bit, but our guys went out and executed executed pretty well and and handled the elements. Um, I think our guys have the right temperament and attitude, and are playing their tails off. And uh, you know, the guys in maroon love to play and it showed up on, on last weekend's game. So I was happy with the win. Uh, in terms of Furman, they're a good football team. They spent number two uh, a lot of the season at number two in the country uh, for a good part of it. Uh, they're terrific on defense. They just, uh, they're always in the right place. They're very veteran on, well, they're very veteran everywhere. We've got 16 senior starters listed. Um, the offense is skilled. Wide receiver, running back, the offensive line are all fifth-year seniors. And then uh, the quarterback, Huff, is the guy that makes him go. I just love that dude. He's a great player. He's a competitor. Uh, he's a tough runner. He's a good thrower. He's a military guy. He's in the Army Reserve, I believe. I mean, he's just he's, he's awesome. I'm, I'm a big fan of his. I won't be a big fan until after the game on Friday. But uh, he's that kid's a winner, and he makes him go. So... You combine all the all the veteran players, and and uh, they're the number one turnover margin team in the country. Uh, this is really a, a tall test. We have our hands full. Um, I would say this: we need our fans. We need the noise. They check a lot. Crowd can have an impact this weekend. Sometimes they can. Sometimes they can't. They can have an impact this this Friday night. Questions. Uh, Bobby, you brought up the fact that they are the number one turnover margin team in the country. Uh, you know, what have you seen from them that attributes to that? Uh, well, I mean, the answer to that question is the defense takes it away and the offense doesn't give it up. You know, I don't know how else to respond really, but that, I mean, they're good. They take care of the football. That's how you get there. We've been in that situation here a few times. And uh, Nick, another big game for you in the snow. Is it safe to say? Uh, that you uh, like running in the snow? Yeah, I don't mind the snow. Um, I don't really uh, try to let it affect me too much. And uh, I know that our team kind of um, tries to use that, use that to our advantage because that's just kind of where we are as a university. We're located here, and um, the snow is going to be a problem. So it's something we just have to kind of deal with. Bobby, you touched on the quarterback. Can you just kind of, I guess, elaborate on what kind of makes him go? You've talked about the things he's good at. Obviously, he dealt with some injuries and seemed to bounce back pretty well. Just what kind of stands out to him most when you look at the film? Yeah, I mean, that's probably a better question for their coaching staff because I'm just, you know, I'm watching him. But I can tell he's a competitive guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Talking to people that have played against him, they say exactly that. Uh, he's really a well-rounded player. He's a tough, like I said, he's a tough runner. He's an accurate thrower. And he'll he'll fight for yards and first downs and appears to me on film he'll do anything he can do to win. Hayden, for you, just this is your first year here with the Grizz. Just what's it been like, kind of acclimating, and then just kind of have a game like you did on Saturday, where you had you know the season high in tackles and just you know, what's I guess can you just describe what this first year has been like for you and being part of this defense? Yeah, I mean it's been definitely a year of improvement for me. Um, getting here in the spring has really helped me um, get used to the defense coming from a different defense. Um, but I think the coaches have done a really good job as well as the players of helping me acclimate to the defense and getting some rest with the guys has been really helpful so far. Obviously you came from the FBS level, but you're getting to experience FCS playoffs now in the format. So what was it like kind of playing in a, in a playoff game for the first time on, on Saturday and going forward? No, it was really cool. Um, my time at UCLA, we only got two, two bowl games. So coming to go, you know, play for the national championship is really special. And I think it's a really good format, you know, for college football. And I'm really excited for the game on Saturday. Coach, 
what, what sort of crossover have you had with the SoCon in your career? Boy, I don't know. I was trying to think too. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. You know, the leagues have all changed so much. Oh. You don't even know who's there. I mean, a Appalachian State was in there. Um, Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those two for sure. Beyond that, um, boy, I don't know. It seems like when I watch the Big Sky, the Missouri Valley, there's kind of like defining characteristics about the league. Do you, can you see any from them? I know it, like their last game was an all SOCON game with Chattanooga and, and Furman together. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was watching the Chattanooga game, and, and I was going, when did we play against them? And I figured out that's where the championship was. I recognized the stadium. <laughs> so, uh, but we never coached against them. So, um, uh, it's, I mean, there's enough teams in all these leagues that it's – I mean, you, it's it's either one or the other. You can say everybody runs the same stuff, or I mean, everybody runs the same plays. Well, watch the NFL, watch college football. Everybody runs the same stuff. There's there's very little uh, uniqueness in college football. Firm has given up even less in the NFL. Firm has given up like 17 points per game. Uh, you talk about the turnover margin. What else do they do well defensively? Well, they're again. I, I think it probably stems from how veteran they are I mean, they're, they're certainly well coached everybody fits together they've all played a, a lot of football they all understand how they fit the formations and the schemes whether it's whether it's their coverages matching up with with your formations and route concepts they, they match them up both in zone and man um, the run fits they match up really well uh, I think uh, seems to me and you know we're day and a half into this but it seems to me that their players have a great understanding of what they're trying to do on defense. Bobby, when you watch Furman on film, do they remind you of any team you guys have played this season? Well, I'll go back to <coughs> kind of what I said. Everybody does the same stuff, so they remind me of everybody. <laughs> Other than they're better at it than some. I know their head coach was a longtime offensive line coach. Maybe you guys overlapped when you were both in the Mountain West, but, and they have a couple or most of their offensive linemen got some sort of all-conference awards. What, what kind of stands out with how their offensive line plays when you watch them on film? Yeah, I think they come off the ball well. Again, it goes back. They're, very, they're veteran. They're all fifth-year seniors. They've all played a lot. Um, again, there's a reason why they're ranked number two in the country for a good part of the season, and you know the O-line's a piece of that. And then as far as the defensive front, they – ranked highly in the country in sacks, and it's kind of spread out among a handful of players stat-wise. So why have they excelled in terms of getting sacks? Well, I mean, you can ask Hayden that question. He's going to tell you because they're winning up front. And I know they had a handful of blocked kicks and blocked punts. When you watch the film, why are they able to have success in both of those departments? Even last year, I think they had... 10 also I read yeah they they choose to pressure it so that's you know they're getting there quite a bit I mean they, they're uh, they do a really nice job with that sorry Bobby first presser for me this year um <laughs> I wanted to ask you do you remember uh the 01 game were you in Chattanooga or uh, do you remember that game against Furman for the 01 title game I remember it I was at a recruiting lunch in Seattle on Lake Union, when I was working in Washington, I made them turn the that game on. They, they were watching some other game, and I made them turn they turn, made them turn the NFL game off and put on that game. So yeah, yeah, I remember thirteen six. How do you rank that memory as far as games you've watched? And you know, as a Grizz alum, winning the national championship and kind of your memory of that experience. Oh, that's exciting. You know, it's, it was exciting. It's always good to win win that one in particular. Hell, I wouldn't know. Nick, let's t I just want to talk about the offensive identity. You guys um, throughout the year seem to be gaining more and more confidence um, as who you are and what you want to get done. Even coming out in that game um, this weekend, throwing a pick on the first possession, but then bouncing back and not, not losing a beat. Just Can you talk about the confidence you have in not only Clifton, but the rest of the line to, to get things done and kind of how you guys have clicked towards the latter part of the season in, in, in that aspect? Yeah. Um... You know, I feel really comfortable with everyone that's on the field, and um, we all come together as a unit to uh, get production. And um, 
I really trust that when I'm running the ball that the holes are going to be open and the old line's done a really good job with that and um, the offense has been pretty balanced <laughs> and um, that's what we're kind of striving to do is be able to throw and run the ball and um, I think we've been, been doing a really good job doing that. Obviously, you've played a lot of games here at Walgreens, but just being able to play at home in the playoffs, just that extra um, added advantage that the crowd gives you, do you really believe in that? Do you think that really helps you guys? Do you feed off of that? Yeah, you know, when the energy is high in the stadium, um, it can get chaotic, and I know that helps the, the defense a lot, and um, it's pretty exciting to have that crowd roar. Aiden, I'll ask you the same question with your first year being here. What has the the crowd noise and the, and the atmosphere matched up to what you were expecting coming into Missoula this year? Um, it's awesome. Um, going out there every Saturday uh, to Walgreens is really special. And um, going forward in the playoffs and this game on Saturday, the crowd's going to have a really big deal as they, they recon to the sideline a lot. So we're going to be relying on them to make some noise, and we're going to really feed off that energy. Hayden, can you just also speak to, I guess, the way this defense kind of settles in during games? Because obviously teams start with scripted plays to kind of get going, and then you guys kind of settle in. Just what's it like on this defense kind of settling as the game goes on? Because it feels like you guys just get better and better once they get past those first couple series. Yeah, once we make our you know first, second drive adjustments, um, I feel like the defense does a really good job of everyone doing their their 111th. Everyone's doing their job, and we can really you know um, function on a high level. Just being on a defense like this with so many guys, we're like, you know, you were the leading tackler this last week. It could be anybody, anybody making a play. Just what's that like? Just having so many guys who can do something like that, both you know, first and second string. Yeah, I think it's just a testament to everyone doing their job and whatever plays come to you, come to you, and just trusting the guys next to you to do their job. And if everyone does that, then you know, everyone's going to get you know, um, get stats. But at the end of the day, it's a team game, and just doing your one eleventh is the overall goal of the whole thing. Nick, it feels like the offense has done a pretty good job at starting fast. You know, just what's it been like? What, what's gone into making that happen for you guys as the season goes on, where each game it seems like you guys are kind of off and running right out of the gate? Yeah, kind of like what I said before, just trusting each other and um, kind of feeding, or, yeah, feeding off what Hayden said is just doing your 111th. And um, for us, it's just like putting the ball in the right spot and uh, trusting that the O-linemen are going to open up holes and um, – just getting out and doing your job, breaking tackles when you can, and uh, yeah, everybody just doing their job and um, making the plays that they need to. And coach, you talked about the 01 game. Obviously, you were at Washington at the time, but you got here not long after that uh, to be the head coach at your alma mater. Just do you remember what I guess the atmosphere was like when you got here of a team that had just recently won a national championship? Did anything kind of stand out when you got here uh, after that point? Well, I mean, we'd lost like four or five before that coming in, so you know that was. You know, you go, you go two years out. That's kind of ancient history. At that point, you got to get going. Um, that's about what I recall. Bobby, for Cliff to have only thrown two interceptions and in like 180 pass attempts or something, that's really low um, for that many attempts. What do you kind of attribute to why he's been able to take care of the ball and, and passing it? I'm, it's simply that, Frank. He's just take care of it. He's, he's uh, throwing it to the guys in the right color jersey. A couple special teams questions. We saw some long snapping issues for, for Delaware. Um, I can't remember Grayson having one for you guys. Any issues this year snapping it? Just kind of curious your thoughts on how he's performed for you now in his second year as a long snapper. Yeah. Did you want something on Delaware? And they snap. They snap the one over the guy's head. Yeah, I mean that that didn't have nothing to do with the snapper. Okay. Anyway. But just interested in Grayson and your thoughts on how how he's uh, been the long snapper for second year. Yeah, certainly. He's, Grayson's done a great job. Uh, typically, you don't notice the holder of the snapper unless there's a problem. Kind of take him for granted. Uh, we don't. Uh, we appreciate him and we appreciate Grayson. And then Nico Ramos come in, has made every field goal he's attempted the, the past month since he's came on. Just what can you say about his ability to, to step up these past uh, few games for you guys after not kicking field goals for the first couple months of the year? 
Yeah, he's done a nice job given the opportunity. I suppose he personifies what we believe in our program, which is <clears throat> you prepare yourself, you get ready to go, and when you get given an opportunity, you succeed. Uh, that happens throughout the season th on uh, every football team in the country, and I suppose the ones that are still in FCS football or even FBS football, the ones that are still playing are the ones that probably do that the best. Um, and Nico's done a done a nice job. That uh, that first field goal in the whiteout blizzard last weekend was pretty special, actually. Anybody else? Thanks, everyone.